bargaining is the problem because jurors are people too and jurors carry their prejudices into a trial just as prosecutors carry their prejudices into a plea bargain. And when a defendant of color looks at what his chances are going to be after a plea where he can control the sentence or after trial where he can't and he knows what stands between him and that post-trial sentence is a jury who doesn't look at all like him, it's not a, an irrational choice on the part of that defendant to say I'd rather take some control and get a lesser sentence now. It's especially not irrational when the evidence is very strong. And in most cases that go that far in our justice system, the evidence is very strong. There are aberrations, there are perversions of justice, but most, most of the time when prosecutors make the decision to take a case through to trial, it's because the evidence is pretty strong. Do we want plea bargains to be consistent? I mean, should they be, uh, like for a certain type of case, you should get a certain offer and that's the way it should be? Or should it be more individualized? It should be consistent in the sense that if it varies from person to person, it does so for a good reason. Not because of the color of somebody's skin, not because of whom you know or where you grew up, but because of the crime you committed and the likelihood you have of being a reformed person at the end of your sentence. Those, there, a lot of factors can enter into that calculation and those factors were all legitimate for prosecutors and judges to consider after a plea bargain. We don't want there to be variation because of race and so when you have a system, say in the federal system today, where the, the proper sentence for a crime as dictated by, at least by Congress and the Sentencing Commission can be identified, then we can say that for the average plea and the average case, there should be a 30 or 40 percent discount from that, from that proper sentence. That would be, I think, a system that at least starts out in a way that might lead to some justice. We, where it's just the seat of the pants judgment of a prosecutor, then I think all sorts of prejudices can play in. Matreya, do you have any ideas on, on how we can fix this problem? Uh, in the, the, the fact that we have uh, people who are being treated differently uh, because of, of their skin color or who they are. And if we are going to have plea bargaining, which it seems like it's here to stay, how can we make sure that it's not being abused? I think everything comes down to cognitive bias if you're going to be talking about um, the disproportionate impact of some on plea bargaining then there's so there's so many different aspects to this in terms of innocent people um, guilty pleas are a huge problem in the sense that <laughs> in the sense that um, you almost have no opportunity ever to overturn such a case it's almost impossible to go back and and secure justice for someone who pled guilty. In terms of preventing people from pleading guilty wrongfully, um, then we need well-resourced defense attorneys and well-educated prosecutors and best practices among police uh, officers. They need to use proper eyewitness identification procedures. They need to record interrogations. So the causes of wrongful conviction are the causes of wrongful conviction. The causes of wrongful plea bargains are, are related to those same social pressures, um, but it is not a simple fix. And I think that um, I am absolutely with George that I can't imagine a system where you just said everybody's going to stop pleading guilty. I think that would, for, for innocent people, that would be an absolute nightmare. Jury trials, where we see that the defendant was innocent and got and got convicted, ordinarily have no have terrible evidence of guilt, very little, very shoddy, and it's a matter of how the case was done that resulted in a person um, getting convicted. And you can't see that when they've pled guilty. Thank you for being on the show, Matreya. Thanks for having me. And thank you, George. It was a pleasure. It's time for a national conversation on plea bargaining. We need to break from our resigned acceptance of course, guilty pleas and unjust convictions as a necessary evil in an overburdened system. Our constitutional rights are worthy of protection. And that includes the Sixth Amendment right to trial. We'll see you next time on Justice Matters.